God, he is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. I got my watch on. I'm going to look at it, I promise. <laughs> uh, the whole point of us being here today is that Jesus is here. Yes. We sing about that because he's the one who we've, we've come to meet with. Yes. Amen. Uh, if you could see Jesus with your physical eyes today, because he is here. Amen. Uh, it's just as I thought we had, I was uh, talking with a pastor one day and he was telling me about a, a, an experience he had. He had a vision while he was in church one day and he was up on the platform uh, while the, uh, and now, now it's my mic and it's doing funny things. No, um, uh, I just, uh, there's a, like a, a spot. We'll find the spot where it doesn't drop out. Anyway, uh, this pastor was in his church, and he was up on the platform while the worship team was singing. And uh, he said all of a sudden he saw Jesus walking in the congregation. He said he, he watched the, the people uh, worshiping. And is it dropping? See it? Oh, my goodness. We'll not have that. Amen. I brought my own microphone. It's not your fault. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's see if that helps any. That uh, antenna was a little bit funny. We'll see. Let's see if that works. Can we, ha we can handle it, right? So anyway, Jesus was walking in this congregation, and uh, the pastor was watching Jesus walk through the congregation, and he said he was kind of noticing that some people were praising and worshiping, and some people weren't, you know, as Pastor Larissa was talking about how, you know, you're coming up to another level. The more you connect with God for yourself, it's not about just, you know, everybody participating as far as we want everybody to participate. No, we want you to connect with God. Amen. And every time everybody does that individually, then we all go up. Amen. So this pastor was watching and, and Jesus is kind of moving around his congregation. And the pastor said, I started to feel a little embarrassed because some of the people weren't worshiping God, you know, and Jesus is looking at them and they're kind of, you know, looking around and, you know, not knowing what to do kind of, and they just weren't really engaged. And, and uh, so the, the pastor's watching Jesus go through his congregation. His heart's beating a little faster, like I'm kind of, you know, I'm trying to present the troops, you know. And, uh, and, and so then finally Jesus walks up to the platform and stands right in front of the pastor. And he said, uh, this is my church. And the pastor went, yes, sir, this is, this is your church. <laughs> this is your church. And Jesus said, I love my church. I love my church. Wow. We sometimes get this idea, you know, that we got to just get it all right and get it all packaged up properly, you know, and, and, then, and then we'll present it to God. <laughs> and uh, he's just looking for our eyes on him. And he's already looking at us even if we're not looking at him. Amen. He's watching out for us. He's looking for us. He's, you know, the Bible says he's looking for true worshipers. He's looking for that. Why? Not because he's got a big ego, but because he knows if, if we'll get our eyes on him, if we'll connect with him, then he can move. He can do something. Yeah. Amen? All that to say, if you could see Jesus with your physical eyes today, because we didn't come to meet, this is not a memorial service. He's here because he's alive. Amen? And so, but if, you know, we don't see him, but First Peter says, even though we don't see him, we love him. Yeah. And, we, and, and we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory because we, we know him, amen? But if you could see him with your physical eyes today, how would that change your approach to this service? How would that change your approach to him? We're going to be ministering by the laying on of hands with some folks today for healing, how would that change your expectation if you could see Jesus with your physical eyes today? Would you be going, I, I don't know if anything's going to happen, or would you be going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> this, this is my day, that's Jesus. Amen? Well, he's the only one who can heal. And everything we do, we do in his name because he said so. He said for us to do it in his name, and he said, if you do it in my name, I'll be there, and I'll do it. Yeah. Praise God. So you don't have to see him with your physical eyes, but if you could imagine him 
that he's the one going to be ministering to you today. Amen. Wouldn't that change yeah. your expectation a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's open our eyes. What do you say? Let's open our eyes to who he is, not just who he was, but who he is. Praise God. Look with me, if you would, to Mark's gospel, the fourth, or excuse me, Mark chapter one. Let's go to Mark chapter one. And uh, we had such a great time with the ladies' conference. Praise God. And uh, I'll say it also on behalf of Olivia. I know she would want to say the same thing. Thank you to everyone who helped who did anything in preparation. It doesn't just happen. You don't just rent a room and everybody shows up. You know that, those of you who helped. And uh, those of you who have been helping for months and planning and pray, praying and preparing and, and serving. And uh, I mean, it took a lot of people to make that meeting happen. And you blessed a lot of folks. I know six ladies got filled with the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Praise yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. One lady I know of got born again. I don't know about anybody else, but that's one I know of. Praise the Lord. And so you touched a lot of people. Amen. You ministered to a lot of people. You opened your hearts to other churches. And so thank you on behalf of Olivia and myself. Uh, we, we so enjoyed being with you, and we just want to thank you for everything you did for it. Praise God. And I uh, hope you'll get some rest sometime soon. Praise the Lord. We know how that works. But here in Mark chapter 1, let's look at some things. Real, We don't have to spend a lot of time doing this because we do want to minister to you by uh, because that's what Jesus said we could do. He said in Mark chapter 16, we're not going to turn to it right now, but Mark chapter 16, he said, these signs will follow them that believe. They'll follow those that believe. I want to tell you right now, I'm a believer. I'm a believer, and these signs follow me because I'm a believer. One of the signs that, that follow is the Bible says they'll lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. Glory to God. We've got God's word for it. Jesus himself said so. It's not something we're making up. It's not just some practice we've adopted. We're doing it because Jesus said so. And if he's the healer, let's look at how he did it. Praise God, because that's how he's going to do it today. Look here in Mark chapter 1. In verse 29, it says, Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife, or Peter, wife, mother, lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Uh, it says here that she laid sick of a fever. I, I like to look up words in the concordance. I like to see what things really mean. Is she just tired or is she just, you know, uh, you know feeling a little ill? This means laid out so weak and laid out from fever, from sickness. We don't know what kind of sickness, but, you know, if there's a fever, you know what it feels like. Yeah. She was out. And it says, so he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately. Glory. Anybody like that word besides me? Yeah. Everybody say immediately. 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 <laughs> the fever left her and she served them. Praise God. Immediately, he took her by the hand. Look at verse 40. Now a leper came to him, came to him, came to him. He didn't go to the leper. The leper came to him. A leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. In other words, if you want to. If you want to. How many of you know God's able? Ephesians, the third chapter says, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Amen. In another place, Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. So who's going to get those possibilities? Believers. Amen. But this man said, and I know you can do something. Most people believe that God is able. Most people believe that God is able. They wouldn't say, oh, God can't do that. They at least believe he's able. But most folks don't really know that he wants to or that he always wants to. Let's take it another step further. And so Jesus answered this question. He says, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus, I love this, moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. Stretched out his hand and touched him. And said to him, I am willing I am willing. Be cleansed. Touched him. Now he's a leper. Nobody wants to touch lepers. 
You're not supposed to touch lepers. Lepers aren't supposed to be anywhere close to anybody else. But Jesus didn't just say, I want to. He so said, I want to. He touched him. Amen. And it wasn't a, a little finger, you know. It wasn't like, you know, make the sign of the cross on the forehead. That wasn't popular yet. <laughs> When it says he touched him, most of the time when you say, see in the Gospels when Jesus touched people or put his hand on people, it, had, it, it meant more than just this. It was like a grab. It was like, I got you. He was personal. He, he wasn't like, ew, <laughs> sanitizer. <laughs> No, he touched people. Yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> he said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, I am willing. Be cleansed. Verse 42, as soon as he had spoken, I hear that word again, immediately, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Wow. Awesome. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2, uh, this, there's an event here in the ministry of Jesus, and probably a lot of you know this event. Uh, if you ever went to Sunday school, you probably heard about this event. If not, you've maybe heard since, but there's this time that Jesus was in a house teaching, and uh, the house was full of religious people. And it's amazing how little happened when religious people were around. <laughs> Which is no wonder. <laughs> Uh, how still little happens Amen. around religious yeah. people. I'll just leave that right there. <laughs> how little real supernatural things happen. Yeah. And uh, so these religious people were there, very intelligent, very smart people, Pharisees, doctors of the law, everybody who knows the law. And, and they're all there hearing Jesus preach and teach. Jesus is teaching the word, teaching from the Old Testament scriptures, teaching God's character and God's love, I'm sure, because that's all he's got. Amen. Amen. In Luke's uh, account of this, it says the power of God was present to heal them. Yeah. Yeah. All of those people in that room, the power was present yeah. to heal them. Yeah. But none of those people in that room got I said, if you got a room full of religious people, not a lot of stuff happens. Yeah. But somebody else came. Yeah. And... Uh, they, they expected something. They couldn't get in the house, but they, that didn't stop them. They went up on the roof and tore open the man's roof to let a paralyzed man down through. That's ingenuity right there. That, that's, that's, some, that's some guts right there. To tear open somebody's roof and, uh, and let him down, his four friends let him down. And the Bible says this, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith. Well, there had to be faith in those guys because you're not going to go through all that trouble if you don't expect to receive something. And faith isn't just a, a blind trust that God's able. Faith is a trust that God is willing and will do it to you today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's why they did everything they did to get there. He saw their faith. He said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven you. That's a crazy thing to say. And some of the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus with themselves, I'm telling you, reasoning is a thief of faith. He said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Which is easier to say to the paralytic? Your sins are forgiven you or to say arise, take up your bed and walk? How many of you know only God can say either one? Yeah. Right? But he said, which is easier? Don't you like that? Yeah. I like that because he didn't say which is harder. Yeah. If he had said which is harder, then one would be hard and the other one harder. Yeah. <laughs> but he said, which is easier? So for God, they're both easy. Yeah. Come on, that's good. Yeah. Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take and go to your house. Verse 12. What is it? Immediately. Yeah. Come on, say it again. Immediately. Immediately. He arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. 
Go with me to chapter 7. Are you seeing a pattern yet? <laughs> About Jesus today because Jesus is the healer. He's the one who's here. Amen? Praise God. Uh, and 7, starting in verse uh, 32. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Verse 35. What's that word? Immediately. Immediately. His ears were open and the impediment of his tongue was loosed and he spoke plainly. Everybody say immediately. immediately. Are you seeing this pattern? Yeah. <laughs> God, praise God. In Acts chapter 10, uh, testifying about Jesus and his years with Jesus said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. What's the anointing? What is that? We talk about the anointing sometimes. We talk about the anointing bits like, oh, we felt, we, we felt something in the service. It, it was anointed. Well, what's that mean? It means he was there on it. Amen? Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. To anoint in its very simplest terms mean to rub on, to smear on, or to paint. You can say that the walls of this church are anointed not because it's church, but because there's paint. <laughs> Somebody put one substance on another. They painted it. They rubbed it on the walls. So Jesus said, God is on me because he has put himself on me. Jesus didn't do any of these miracles before God came on him when he was baptized. There's a difference. He didn't do miracles when he was a kid, contrary to religious thinking. He didn't do miracles as a child. No, he didn't. He didn't until the Spirit of God came on him. He laid aside all of that power in heaven that he had with God when he came as a man. And then God put himself back on him so that he could do the work of God on the earth. So everything Jesus did, he did because God was on him. The anointing was on him. And look what it did. Immediately people were well. Immediately people got healed. Praise God. Why? That's the anointing. In Isaiah, the 10th chapter, it says it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. What's a yoke? Anything that ties you to something else. If it ties you to sickness, it's a yoke. If it binds you to something else, it can be destroyed by the anointing. And the yoke is never stronger than the anointing. Because the anointing... Is it's not something that God sends on his behalf because he can't be there. The anointing is God on. And God still anoints today. He anoints people with himself. It's always been God. Jesus said, uh, don't you, when Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, have you been with me all this time? And you're asking, show us the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen him. If you've seen me, you've seen him. He says, everything. I've done it's because God is doing the work God it's God on me doing the work if you've seen me then you've seen God hallelujah and so God still puts himself on people that's amazing today praise God and look what happens look with me uh, immediately his ears were open and the impediment of his tongue was loose and he spoke plainly praise God go with me to chapter 10 Mark chapter 10 Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho, oh, verse 46, I'm sorry. They came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He heard that it was Jesus. He's blind, he doesn't recognize you, but he heard about Jesus from other people. 
He, what did he hear? He heard he's anointed. He heard he had power. He heard that he was healing people. And so as soon as he heard that, he said, I want some. <laughs> have mercy on me. Many warned him to be quiet, but he cried all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, I love this, What do you want me to do? Isn't that amazing? That Jesus would ask someone, What do you want, what do you want me to do? So many times people come to Jesus, you know, or, or they come to have hands laid on for healing. It's like, well, I, I don't really even know everything. I just, I, just got, I just need God to do something. Well, I don't mean to be rude, but normally if you're standing in front of a blind person, you can tell they're blind. Yeah. 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 Right? Normally. You can tell they're blind. And so Jesus sees this blind man right in front of him and still asks him, what do you want me to do? Well, maybe he had the sniffles. <laughs> maybe he had a backache. But Bartimaeus was bold enough to say, I want my sight. I want my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith, your faith, your faith has made you well. Your faith. Jesus didn't even touch him. Didn't even touch him. This time, some of the other times he touched people, but this time he didn't even touch him. He just said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. <laughs> and? Come on. Immediately. Immediately. He received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. Go back now to Mark chapter 5. Praise God. Immediately. Immediately. Now, in the Gospels, we have lots and lots of events, of course, of times that Jesus ministered to people. And, and in Luke's Gospel, it tells us lots of times, multitudes. Mark's Gospel also said multitudes came. Matthew's Gospel, multitudes. Luke's Gospel said multitudes came and Jesus ministered to them. So we know he ministered to a lot of groups of people. In one place, it says everybody who touched him was made whole. In Luke's Gospel, it says they came to hear him and to be healed. And they sought to touch him because power went out from him. What's that power? That anointing, God on him. The power was on him. People touched and received the power. So we know that multitudes got healed, but we also have these individual testimonies, a bunch here in Mark we just read. And in the individual testimonies of Jesus, we have about 19 individual examples of people who got healed where we can tell kind of what their, you know, their, their individual issue was and how Jesus dealt with them whether he had hands on them or whether he spoke to them or how it happened, how he interacted with them. And so this is our, these are the examples that we go by because the Bible says that faith, faith wakes up when you hear the word. Faith comes, Romans 10, 17 says in the King James, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Another translation says that faith is awakened. I like that. It wakes up when you hear the truth. Amen? Amen? We have lots of ideas how God does things. And we can, we can make up stories how God does things or how we've seen things in other people and then start to make up our own ideas based on other people's experiences. And uh, I, I ladies the other day, and if you listen to a lot of Christian music, you'll get lots of ideas that aren't necessarily scriptural. God, I don't know why you don't do this. <laughs> well, the reason they don't know why is because they haven't read the Bible. <laughs> the Bible answers it. They've just gone to church and listened to somebody say, God doesn't always say yes. Or God's got three answers, yes, no, and wait a while. I don't see that in here. <laughs> so we've got to go back. To the basics. Yeah. Now, I lived, I lived in Alabama for many years, and a famous Alabama coach, Bear Bryant, 
And I, th I think the Green Bay Packers coach did the same thing years ago. Whenever they got a new team in, you know, he'd always talk to them and he'd go, this is a football. <laughs> now, these guys have been playing football since they were kids. Coming up, you know, in, in all their school years, they've been playing for 10 years already before they got to college. And he says, this is a football. <laughs> Let's start with the basics. How many of you know, uh, still today, when you have to file anything, you still sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> does L come before or does, when does M come? M or N? L, M, N, O. Okay, got it. It's always L-M-N-O, isn't it? L-M-N-O, L-M-N-O-P, L-M-N-O-P. <laughs> we still sing song it. The elementary things, right? We still use the elementary things every day. We don't get past them. We don't need to get past them. We'll get more light, but it always lines up with the elementary. The elementary stuff doesn't change. You know, you can get more and more education as you go, but the elementary stuff hasn't changed along the way. You get more light, right? You can, you can take basic math or trigonometry, but trigonometry doesn't change basic math. So you can get more complicated situations, but the elementary stuff still stays the same right here in the Word. And Jesus is our example. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so if God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who did these things, and God anoints us with the Holy Ghost and power, we can do these things. Amen. Because Jesus said in John's gospel, the things that I doing will you do also and greater because I go to my Father. You're going to have the same Holy Ghost in you, and you can do the same things that I did. So if, if, you, if you're muddied up about what God is willing to do, you just got to go back here and read it again. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, but so-and-so died, and they said they were in faith. Okay, but let's look at what Jesus did. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's, let's look here. Let's look here. Let's go back to the basics yeah. because this is where truth is. Yeah. This answers everything. And so here in Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter, we have a, a tremendous event where uh, we see some awesome things. And this is what we want to end up with here before we minister to you by the laying on of hands today. Verse 21 of Mark chapter 5. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea. So here's a lot of people around him again. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet reverent. And begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. So here's, here's the, the, the situation. Jairus' daughter's at the point of death. I can't imagine anything worse. And yet there's a bunch of people around Jesus. He can't get anywhere fast. And imagine Jairus thinking, can we, can we hurry this along? Can we, can we get going? Jesus didn't answer with anxiety. He wasn't pressured by this, she's at the point of death. He just went with them. I don't know how far it was away. I don't know how far they had to go, but there was a lot of people around him. And a lot of people just, just, just always, always looking. What's he gonna do next? What's he gonna do? To, let's go. Let's go see what happens. Yeah. And a lot of folks uh, not necessarily believing much. Yeah. Just, just wanted to see. I mean, we saw that when Jesus ministered to that deaf man, he took him aside from that multitude. Yeah. <laughs> they said they, they brought, they brought a, a deaf man to him and said, "Here, uh, lay your hands on him." And he, and he said, oh, "Okay, you guys wait here." He took him away from that multitude. I know why he did. Because there's a lot of times you'll get a separate gasp when somebody comes up with something we, people think is hard. They'll, they'll go, oh, oh, oh what, what are you gonna, what's she going to do now? What's he going to do now? 
Oh, well, we know that person. We, well, <gasps> they take all the air out of the room. <laughs> that feels like. I've wanted to take people in the other room. We'll be right back. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. We'll be, we'll be right back. So Jesus took that man away from the multitude. But so now there's a multitude around going to see what, what's going on with Jairus. And they're not all believing. Well, well, we'll prove it here in just a second. Verse 25, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. 12 years. At what point do you think it's permanent? She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she heard he was anointed. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Well, that's a strange thing to do. Why in the world would she do that? Because, verse 28, she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well she said if only I may touch his clothes I shall be made well verse 29 immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? This is an amazing event because she, on purpose, the Bible says the reason she came and touched his clothes is because she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be well. So she followed through with what she said and touched. Why would she touch? Because the Bible tells us she heard of Jesus. What did she hear? That he's anointed. That he's anointed. And if it's the anointing that destroys the yoke, she wants to come in contact. She wants to touch. She didn't just uh, uh, arbitrarily say at home, I'm going to touch his clothes. If I touch his clothes, I'll be healed. She didn't just pick something to do. She already heard that he was anointed and that power was going out of him. And so if power was going out of him, she wanted to contact that power. So she decided this is the way that I'll contact the power. I'll touch his clothes. Praise God. And that power will flow. And it did. And Jesus knew that power went out of him and said, who touched my clothes? Well, the disciples are going, um, everybody's touching you, right? There's that multitude around him. Have you ever been somewhere like a, a, a ball game or something or, or where you had to wait for the doors to open for some, some event and you got a whole crowd of people and all of a sudden the doors are open and you're like, <laughs> you know, you're not even really, you're not even walking of your own accord. <laughs> you're just kind of, whoa, you're in the, you're in the you know. Anybody ever been there besides me? You know, a concert or, or a ball game or something like that where you're waiting and all of a sudden everybody's moving. You're like, you, you can't even, dis, you, you're like, I meant to go through that door, but now I'm going through this door. <laughs> That's the way it was around Jesus. All those people around him all the time. And so he's constantly feeling that and other people around him are feeling that. And so all of a sudden he, he feels power go out of him and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples are going, what what do you mean? Because everybody's touching you. But Jesus, listen, didn't know who the power was. He knew power went out of him, but didn't know who it went into. Right? Right? So if he didn't know who received the power, it wasn't his decision who received the power. Whose decision was it then? Let me give you another chance at that. Whose decision was it? Hers. She decided. 
she decided. Jesus didn't have a meeting with God that morning and go, now who are we on a hill today? I heard about this guy, Jairus, his daughter, you know, she's, she's pretty bad off, and he's a real skin. It'd make us look good if we healed her. Ah, there's, an, there's another woman. She's 12 years, a long time. Nobody knows who she is. Don't forget about her. We don't need, no, the, the, no such meeting. The Bible says she touched because she said, if I touch his clothes, I'll be whole. And when she touched, that act. Believing contact, believing contact, not just contact because everybody else is contacting, everybody else is touching but without believing because no power was transferred. The only time the power was transferred or transmitted out of Jesus is because somebody on the other side believed. And the reason we know all of this, we have this background story for she said and she decided to touch his clothes. And then when Jesus said, who touched my clothes, his disciples said, everybody, and he looked around to see her who had done this thing, verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. So she told him her story. She told him what she decided, right? And Jesus didn't go, you can't do that. <laughs> who do you think you are? No, 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 no. I decide who gets it. You can't, you can't just come up and get what you want. You, can't, you just can't come up. Bartimaeus called out to me, and then I called him. No, you can't do No, he didn't say any of that. What did he say? Daughter, your faith, your decision, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Wow. All of these instances we've seen here today. Like I said, the Gospels, uh, you know, all together, basically, uh, many of them tell the same, some of the same events. But we have about 19 individual examples of when Jesus ministered to people. And uh, out of those 19 examples, you will not find one of them who waited a week or a month, or two weeks. This is a football. <laughs> out of those 19 examples, 16 out of the 19 were instant. Pretty good majority, wouldn't you say? 16 out of the 19 were instant. Uh, you say something like that, and people go, ah, I'm probably one of the other three. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest with you, there's a whole lot of people who are, are going, you know, well, it doesn't always happen instantly. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be healed as I go. But what they're really expecting when they say I'll be healed as I go is I'm still waiting for some event where it happens instantly, just not today. Most people aren't expecting to amend or to get better. They want it to happen instantly. They just don't think it can happen today instantly. They're waiting for some other thing. Like in a week, maybe God will just drop it on me. Well, why not now? It's always now with him. <laughs> it's never not now with God. 16 out of the 19 were healed instantly. Anybody want to know what happened to the other three? Within the hour. Wait an hour if you want to. <laughs> it's like don't get in the pool after you eat. You got to wait an hour. <laughs> I say that because why not get the expectation up higher? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because yeah. we're looking at him to heal us, not... I'm not looking at a person. I'm looking at Jesus. If you were looking at me, I'd say, wait a month, wait 10 months, wait a year. You're not going to get anything from me. But Jesus, through people, is still Jesus. <laughs> He's still Jesus. He's not a discounted Jesus through somebody else. 
Amen. These signs will follow them that believe in my They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They'll be, be going, yeah, recover doesn't mean right away. Cling to it if you want to. Argue if you want to. But recover simply means they'll be well. They'll be well. So whether it takes a minute or it takes a month, don't quit till you're well. Because he said you'll be well. Amen. I'm convinced through scripture, I'm convinced through, through walking with Jesus that the beginning happens immediately every time. Every time there's an immediate, there's a suddenly, there's an immediate beginning to your healing. But a lot of times people then quit or they don't keep standing or they, or they start saying nothing happened, nothing happened, and then your words just take it right out. But let's work with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because he's faithful. Yes. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's always now with God. So how many nows would it take for you to receive your healing? <laughs> you can wait a week if you want to, but then it'll be now. <laughs> when we dismiss the service, it'll be now. When we come tonight at 6 o'clock in Amsterdam, it'll be now then. <laughs> it's always now with God. So Hebrews 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All you've got is now, if you be honest. Yesterday's past. You don't know what's coming in the next few minutes, but you got right now, and all he asks for is now. All he asks for you right now is, right, is give him your now. Give him your belief right now. Isn't he sweet? He's so good. He doesn't ask for next week. He just asks for now. And as long as it's now, we just keep going. Isn't that right? I often liken it to GPS. We set our destination for where we're going. Isn't that right? Some days it might take an hour to get somewhere. Some days it might take 45 minutes. <laughs> but the destination remains the same. Amen. I'll be heading to Albany Airport tomorrow. It might take an hour. It might take 45 minutes. Well, but then if it snowed, it might take a little longer. People might go slower. Maybe there's an accident down the road in front of me I don't know anything about. That delays me, but they didn't move the airport. I could just sit on the side of the road and go, it's been an hour and I'm not there yet. I guess it's not. I guess the airport's gone. <laughs> Somebody moved the airport. It's not the will of God for anybody to fly in and out of Albany today. The airport's gone. It's, it's just, it's not available anymore. No, the destination remains the same. Just keep moving toward it. That's why I'm always saying forward. We just keep moving forward. We just keep going towards that goal. You lay hands on the sick, they'll be well. That's yeah. your destination. You'll be well. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it took two days. Okay. <laughs> What's the destination? Are you well? Yes. Yeah. Oftentimes we ask folks, you know, do something you couldn't do before. Jesus did the same thing. Get up. He told a paralyzed man to get up. How mean is that? <laughs> How cruel is Jesus? He's so <laughs> insensitive to a paralyzed guy. Get up. There was a man with a withered hand. Jesus said, stretch it out. You're like, seriously, what? Stretch it out. Why? Something's changed today. Something's different today. We often will tell folks to do something you couldn't do before. And it's amazing, Pastor, how much it seems like pulling teeth to get him to say what's happening. You know, how much better is it? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, is there like 10% less pain? No, 90% less. <laughs> so you're better. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, to me, it would seem like a happy occasion. Right. Or 
or folks will say, well, well, there's no pain right now. <laughs> with that, with the, yeah. the inflection of it's coming, it's coming back any moment. This is a football. <laughs> Let's get back to Jesus. Yeah. It's okay to admit there's no pain. <laughs> no wonder Jesus said to the one leper who came back, where's the other nine? <laughs> weren't, there, weren't there ten cleansed? <laughs> one came back and gave him thanks. Human nature. Or folks will say, you know, I, I, I actually feel better. <laughs> actually, actually. But I'll come back to the statement I made at the beginning of this service. If you could see Jesus yeah. with your physical eyes today, is that what you'd say to him? It actually feels better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not feeling the pain I felt before. All things are possible yes. to them that believe. Yes. Jesus saying, what do you want? Yes. What do you want? Praise God. He's faithful. Yes. He still is faithful. Yes. Say this with me. Jesus, Jesus. Is, the is the healer. Say it again. Jesus, Jesus. is the healer. Say it one more time. Jesus, Jesus. is the healer. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He is, you know. He's the only one who is. He is faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And one of the ways that he heals is through the laying on of hands. He heals lots of ways. It's not the only way he heals. Amen. We, we, we don't have time in one service to talk about all the ways that he ministers to us. But one way he heals is through the laying on of hands. And uh, that's the way we're going to minister today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now. This is going to take a little bit of time, Pastor. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, anybody in a hurry? We've already had a long weekend. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the reason it's going to take a little bit of time is because we want to minister to you individually. We're not just going to like this and send you back to your seat. We want to help you out today. Praise God. So a, a few um, instructions. Can, are, can you follow instructions? Is that all right? Because yes. we like to th do things in order. Amen. So a few instructions, first of all. Uh, we're going to lay hands on people for your individual physical need. All right? Physical need. In other words, uh, not for a better job, not to get to know Jesus, not for a healing anointing so you can go minister to the sick. This is for you if you have had an issue. Amen? And I also want to just say this as well because whatever is big in your heart about it right now, uh, what I mean by that is, if you hadn't, you know, you've been sitting here in the service and, and uh, yes, the faith is rising up in your heart because of what we've been saying, but if there's not an issue that's been pressing on you, you're just kind of going, hmm, what could I go up for? <laughs> then I'm going to stay in your seat. This is something that, it means something to you. Amen? Things we do, we do on purpose. We don't just line up just in case there's a little left for me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you didn't think about it before today, sit on it. Amen. Amen. There's lots of other methods and other ways. But today we're going to minister by the laying on of hands, praise God, for your physical needs. So I'm also going to ask you not to stand in for another person. It's another method. It's like, uh, uh, for example, I'll be the electrician today and you need a plumbing job. <laughs> well, you're in the business. Can you, can you, fix, can you fix the sink? Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trained to do this over here. It's another method. It's still part of the building process, but it's just another method, another tool. All right? So I'm going to ask you not to stand in for another person today, uh, but for you, for individually. You're here. Amen. Praise God. Let's, uh, let's let the power of God flow today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me ask this. First of all, anybody who's in pain right now, anybody in pain? I'm counting. One, keep your hand up. 
One, two, three, four, five, six on this side. One, two, three, four, five on this side. All right. Praise God. Those of you that we counted, five and six, stand up. Praise God. You're going, boy, you're being picky. <laughs> no, this just means now you're coming expecting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to have, uh, guys, you saw what we did at the women's thing. We'll just start like from, from this, the, on this side, you come stand behind me here. Praise the Lord. And then on this side, just kind of stand behind me right here like this. If you're on this side of the auditorium over here, you can come up here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is the healer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's say it again. Jesus is the healer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, right now we're doing something different. Okay? And we've already ministered to you. I'm glad you're here. So we had five on this side and six on this side from what we started with. It's okay. You're, you're good. We are, yeah, he already ministered to you. Good for you. I felt a weight lift. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's still, it's still working in you. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's totally fine. Totally fine. I'm, I'm glad you're here today. Praise God. Hallelujah. The more you're around the things of God, the more you're saturated. Amen. Praise God. And we just get everything he has for us. And we learn more. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me start with you. What's going on with you? Well, at first I just want to kind of praise yesterday. I was with this conference and God healed my back. Yes. Amen. So um, it's down my left side. Uh-huh. My neck yeah. and my left shoulder. Yeah. You ready to receive now? Yes, yeah. Yeah. You're already experienced now. Yes. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we minister God's healing power to you right now. Yeah. That's his power flowing in you right now. Glory to God. Move it around now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's, it's not as hot and tight as it was. Yeah. It's moving now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Come on. What is it you need today? Back surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for your back. Pain, pain. Bless your heart. In Jesus' name, right now, we minister God's healing power to you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet and your entire back. In the name of Jesus. That's his power flowing into you right now. That's his power flowing into you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Now move, because you can. Praise God. How's that feeling now? <laughs> yeah, good, huh? Praise God. All gone? Mostly gone? What, so far? You feel better? Glory to God. That's just Jesus. Praise the Lord. How long have you had that pain? Since 2011. Wow. Isn't God good to you? He loves you. Oh, praise God. Look, you came to Love City Church and Jesus loved on you. Yes, sir, what's happening with you? What pain? Fibromyalgia. Bless your heart. Your neck, your back, just everything. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is the healer. <laughs> Men are mystified, but not Jesus. He paid the whole price. In the name of Jesus, we minister God's healing power to you right now in his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yep. That's his power flowing in you right now. Going into every nerve right now. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. How's that doing now? Good. Yeah. A lot better. A little, tight. a little tight right there. But so far it's starting off good, isn't it? Yeah. Getting better. Feel Get something. feel something. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, because it's Jesus. Because <laughs> it's Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead and be bold now. Ooh. Wow. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Reactivating in the right ways. Praise God. Every nerve. Every nerve. Amen. Yes. What's going on with you, hon? Uh huh. An abscess. Yeah. Uh huh. So your knees also. Yeah. So you've been in pain in both areas. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we minister God's healing power today right now in Jesus name glory to God thank you Lord thank you Lord Jesus praise God praise God praise God put some weight on your knees now because you can <laughs> how's that feeling better, better yeah <laughs> praise God isn't that awesome that's just Jesus yeah praise God that's just Jesus on you today come on Pain with you Pain in your back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take, take my hands. In the name of Jesus, the anointing makes you free today. Makes you free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's his power. That's his power flowing into you right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Move around real good now. <laughs> yeah. You can see that on her face, right? Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Praise God. Come on. Come on up here. What's going on with you? Uh, I was in the hospital on Friday. Um, I was having shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. um, and they couldn't find out anything. Couldn't find anything was wrong. Still there, yeah. And pain as well with that? Yeah. You ready to receive right now? Yeah. In Jesus' name. Uh-huh. God's goodness flows today. In the name of Jesus, be well. Be whole right now. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, strength comes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Let's take a big breath now. Take another one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Getting easier? A little bit? Yeah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just relax and receive. You don't even have to do anything to receive. Just open your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, that's him moving in you right now. Praise God. Getting easier? Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. No more pain? It's clear. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. What's happening with you? I am receiving my healing today. This yeah. Yeah. In Jesus' name. We minister God's healing mercy today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Driving it out. Driving it out. This body. In Jesus' name. Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. How's that doing now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's kind of like adrenaline. Praise the Lord. What's going on? I have a lot of pain in my feet. In your so, feet? Yes. It's hard for me to stand up. Uh-huh. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you ready to receive now? Yes. 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 In Jesus' name, we minister God's healing power right now. In the name that is above every name, be whole today in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stomp your feet now. Oh, wow, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Woo. Glory to God. Amen. What's going on with you, hon? 
you have celiac disease. In Jesus' name, we minister God's healing power right now to this body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Every cell, every cell, every cell receives resurrection power right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, it does. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What's going on with you? Um, I had uh, reconstructive foot surgery last mm-hmm. May. Mm-hmm. Um, reconstructive foot surgery. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and there's hard, I have hardware. Uh-huh. And right. It's causing a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Uh-huh. Not a problem for Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, we minister God's healing, restorative power right now in the name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's his power going into you right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Praise the Lord. Go up on your toes. Move around. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. How's it doing now? It's okay. No change yet? Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Walk with me. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the power flowing into you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's working in you right now. He's working in you right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Tell a difference yet? Not yet? Well, let me encourage you with this. First of all, we don't receive with our feet. We don't believe with our feet. (laughs) We don't believe with our elbows. We don't believe with our knees or our hips or our ears or no, we heart. Amen. So faith, where we believe, is the same place love is, which is pretty awesome. You don't even have to think about loving. Isn't that right? You don't have to go. Oh man, I hope I love them today. I hope there's enough love. I just. (sighs) You don't have to work it up. It's just it's there. And you love Jesus. He loves you. So just for a second, close your eyes. And just think about how much he loves you. Just think about that for a second. Just the love of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then your heart's open to receive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Let's take another little walk. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. How are we doing now? It feels good, doesn't it? open our heart to him we try so hard sometimes like and just open your heart it's the same place love is praise God yeah what do you need neuropathy Mm -hmm. yeah it's just swollen and sore don't know what's in Jesus name we minister that same healing power right now Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yep, same, same power. Same power going into this body right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Move your feet around. Getting some feeling back in there. Yeah, there's less pins and needles. Less pins and needles. Yeah. 
coming back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. What do you need, huh? Nerve pain. Bless your heart. Wow. Well, Jesus is the healer. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, we minister God's healing mercy, healing power right now. In the name of Jesus, every electrical impulse in this body returns to normal. In Jesus' name, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We just trust you, Lord. We trust you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's His power flowing in you now. It's His power flowing in you right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. How much better so far? Just feel warm. Yeah. That's his power flow it in you. Better than any treatment. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. You? Oh, you're just helping. All right. God, we miss anybody else over here? Glory to God. Come on, let's lift up our hands for a moment. Let's thank him, thank him, thank him for all that so far. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You took our pain. You took our pain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory.